Early Childhood Historical Views presentation by Krista Somel. This presentation is about the psychologist Lev Vygotsky. Lev Vygotsky was born in Russia in 1896. He initially graduated with a law degree in 1917, but he then obtained a degree in psychology in 1925. He began researching language, attention, and memory. He created the sociocultural theory. Lev Vygotsky was interested in child development and education and published six books relating to these topics. He also coined the term zone of proximal development. Vygotsky died in 1934 at the age of 37 from tuberculosis. Vygotsky is considered the father of social constructivism because his socio-cultural theory, which contains the zone of proximal development and scaffolding. The sociocultural theory. This says that learning comes from interactions. It also says that higher order functions are developed as a child interacts with his or her family, peers, teachers, caregivers, society, and culture. Cultural beliefs and attitudes impact the learning and instruction methods that are taught to children. The theory says that children are born with some innate biological abilities, but that their surroundings and culture define what and how they learn. Therefore, Cognitive development is culture specific and differs from one culture to another. The sociocultural theory continued. This theory has two forms of interaction, intrapersonal interaction and interpersonal interaction. Intrapersonal interactions are those that occur within the person, such as self-talk or one's inner voice. Interpersonal interactions are those that occur with another person or a group of people. The zone of proximal development is the difference between what someone can do by themselves with their current skill set and the potential that they can reach through help from someone more skilled, such as a teacher, a parent, a peer, etc. Simply put, the ZPD contains knowledge and skills that a child cannot yet attain by themselves, but that they are capable of learning with help and scaffolding. That brings us to scaffolding, which is support given by a more capable individual, such as a parent, a teacher, or a peer, to help a student develop through their zone of proximal development. Scaffolding is given in the form of modeling, questioning, visual aids, activities, etc. Once the child has achieved their level of understanding, scaffolding or support is lessened until they can complete the task on their own. This video puts it all together and shows that the sociocultural theory is broken down into intrapersonal interactions and interpersonal interactions, the zone of proximal development, and scaffolding. Vygotsky in the classroom. Teachers can follow Vygotsky's sociocultural theory by using scaffolding in their lesson plans to move their students from one developmental level to another within their zone of proximal development. Ways to do this include creating instruction and activities that are one level above what a student can do on his or her own without support. Support the student through the activity until they can perform the task on their own. After, slowly remove the scaffolding to allow the student to achieve the task without help. Steps for scaffolding in the classroom. First, determine the concepts and tasks that students need to master in the classroom by reviewing your state standards. Next, you will analyze which tasks students have already mastered and which tasks are a step beyond what they're capable of doing without help by giving them assessments. Next, develop an overall guide in which each concept builds upon the last. And lastly, create individual lessons that are within a student's zone of proximal development, but that require some scaffolding in order for the child to master. This video shows scaffolding in the classroom as teachers question and observe and provide activities to help their students get to another level in their zone of proximal development. And this last slide is references to show where I got my information from.